Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Nomen live stream. Uh, I'm your host, Adam Hartel, and uh, welcome to tonight's event. We're going to be talking to a really awesome panel of three artists who are also Nomen alumni who all worked on Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, before we get into the event, though, before I bring on our guests, I'm just going to take care of a couple things off the top. The first is I would like to thank uh, Lenovo and NVIDIA for sponsoring tonight's events. Uh, thanks to their sponsorship, Nomen is able to continue to bring free educational content such as tonight's stream to you. And if you're in need of closed captioning uh, for the stream, you can hop over, if you're watching right now, you can hop over to our Facebook live feed and a closed captioning option is available there. Um, and uh, tonight's stream will also be available as video on demand uh, later on on the uh, Nomen uh, Twitch and YouTube channels. Uh, so with that out of the way, uh, let's get down to interviewing our fabulous guests who are with us this evening. Um, I would like to start off by introducing uh, Matt Millard, who is a concept artist and look development lead. Uh, he's originally from Little Rock, Arkansas. Matt has uh, a love for creatures and creepy crawlies. He's been working on VFX for over five years, spanning from concept art to full produc production, um, on-screen ready characters and creatures for film, as well as shot lighting and compositing. Uh, Matt's credits include projects such as Venom, Rampage, Ready Player One, Godzilla vs. Kong, Stranger Things, Detective Pikachu, and many more. Uh, Matt's uh, role on Godzilla vs. Kong was uh, to be responsible for designing the Warbat Nozuki for uh, the film and uh, through the exploration of several variations and versions of the creature, which I think he's going to be sharing some of that with us this evening. Uh, so with that, I'd like to say, uh, Matt, welcome to the stream. We can go ahead and bring you on. Hello, sir. What's up? How are you doing tonight? I'm good, man. Awesome. How are you? So, I'm great. Uh, I'm really excited to be with you guys tonight. So we're going to, as I read everybody's bio, we're going to bring everybody on uh, Brady Bunch style up onto the screen here with our with our webcam. So uh, we're going to move forward to introducing Jared Krzyzewski, uh, who is a concept artist. Uh, Jared is a creature and character designer working in the visual effects industry. Uh, with his decade of experience, Jared has designed many iconic characters who have graced the big and small screen, including Jiminy Cricket on ABC's Once Upon a Time, uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Horus and set in, uh, oh, sorry, Horus and set in Gods of Egypt, uh, Elliot the Dragon and Pete's Dragon, the Crooked Man and James Wan's uh, The Conjuring, uh, really cool character, by the way, Dart in Stranger Things, and Pennywise the Clown in the blockbuster horror film It, uh, Mecha Godzilla for Ready Player One, and Mecha Godzilla for Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, some of Jared's exciting upcoming projects include Antlers, uh, Black Adam, and uh, Megan, I believe is how I pronounce that one, coming out sometime this century, because I've got 20XX for the release date on that one. So sometime this century, stay tight, that project's gonna be coming out as well. Jared's ver uh, role on Godzilla versus Kong was uh, to be a concept artist responsible for designing Mecha Godzilla, and we're going to be seeing some cool Mecha Godzilla art tonight. Jared, welcome to the stream, sir. Hi. Hi. Hi it's <laughs> yes, it's well, you. Uh, welcome. It's great I to see you. It. You made it. Made yes. It. Um, and uh, we will also um, be introing um, Marcella Brown. Uh, Marcella is on her way to the stream. Uh, so as soon as she arrives in our virtual studio, we will be able to uh, bring her in. And I'll just uh, I'll take a short pause as we're talking with Jared and Matt uh, to introduce Marcella once we're able to do that. But while I've got the two of you guys here, um, I read your bios. I've kind of done the official intro. But could you guys just briefly tell us a little bit about yourselves? Um, maybe like that really short, totally impossible synopsis of your artistic journey, like in a couple of minutes. Um, and uh, maybe talk about how you find your way onto the film that we're going to talk about this evening. And uh, let's see, <laughs> eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'll start with you, Matt. All right, start with me. <clears throat> so it's an origin story, right? That's mm. what I'm talking about, comic book style. Uh, let's see, I was uh, living in Little Rock, Arkansas, was playing in some metal bands and all sorts of other bands, and I was the only artist in my group. Um, of friends, and my grandmother actually saw a TV show that Noman was featured on, uh, Face Off, I believe. Oh, wow. And, yeah. uh, and her and her, my mother, together were like, dude, he would be great at this. And so I was blessed enough to travel out to uh, California 
uh, you know, got some really tiny little apartment out in Filipino town and went to Noman for two years and focused as a generalist. And um, I came from restaurant background, so I'm very used to working like millions of hours and very hard all the time. <laughs> and I had this chance to learn how to do like something really fucking cool. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> wouldn't be wouldn't be where I am today at all without uh, the brilliance of Noman and their instructors. And um, I have my uh, career to thank for that, for them, for Jared personally, and for Alex personally. Uh, and that is that's how it happened, man. I at the very end of my senior year, I got introduced and recommended uh, to Aaron Sims by by alex and uh, jared man and that started my my whole uh, career awesome very cool um i'll and i'll pose a quick two quick questions i'll pose the same questions to jared um well you kind of already covered the first which was sort of like why did when you were before you started attending noman why did you decide to go there and obviously this 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 commercial and and it just seemed like an awesome fit and you found your way out there but um, now, retrospectively, reflecting on where you're at now, your time in Noman, um, why would you suggest that someone else choose that school? Oh, <laughs> man, that's easy, bro. Like, you can't get it anywhere else. You can't get this experience literally anywhere else. I was living in the South in between Georgia, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Texas, and didn't even have an idea that this was a job. And right. whenever I yes. got into my second year at Noman, I didn't know that designing creatures was a job until I took Jared's class and it blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, I've been watching scary movies that my mom turned me on to ever since I was mm -hmm. a child. You know? And the idea of loving these things, but not having the information around me to understand like, oh, there's a guy that does this and makes money and they have fun. And I mean, dude, I had no idea. And uh, going to Noman was easily the best decision of my life. Man, there's camaraderie, there's competition, uh, there's legends all around you. Instructors like Max and Stephen McClure and fucking Miguel Ortega, those dudes will lay you to waste, man. You will <laughs> learn the ropes. You will learn what greatness is. And, and the school is absolutely incredible it uh so 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 thankful for it and i would well, the cool thing is now and now you're blowing minds and uh you know i know that even the film we're gonna be talking about tonight i i get to talk to like people that were in the uh, position that you were in before he came to noman and they're out there going yeah godzilla versus kong this is amazing and noman alumni worked on it so it's just it's a gift that keeps on giving right like you get to now blow minds and they get to find their way into this going it's real it's a job um all right so jared uh you you already have a reputation of blowing minds um well, cool. at, at noman uh and matt <laughs> just set that reputation for you um but uh yeah can you tell us a little bit about your journey um and i think yeah. you know you've been at noman both as an alumnus both as a student but also you teach at noman yeah it's true uh, i've been teaching for eight years now or a little over eight years i think um but uh yeah no so uh my my origin story begins on a dark and stormy night in the mountains mm. of colorado you know surrounded by the forest elk and uh and and the <laughs> and the shadow of the moon uh, uh but in truth, no, I was, a, I was a monster kid, so I was always walking around, um, you know, making scary monster voices. And, you know, my mom didn't like me watching these movies, but my dad encouraged it. He was a doctor, uh, you know, a doctor and a surgeon. So he took me to all these rated R movies as a kid. So I was seeing Terminator 2 in theaters and Total Recall and, you know, all these movies that a kid just shouldn't see, you know, I was going to see them. And then when I wasn't watching them in theaters, I was going to my best friend's place and we watched all the movies I wasn't allowed to watch. So that was kind of like, uh, because it was kind of secretive. It was like, this is, you know, uh, what I loved. And I took, uh, 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 I, I was acting as a kid as well. So 
Um, I had an agent. I would go on auditions. Uh, I did uh, a few commercials in Colorado, things like that. So kind of um, characters and monsters and all these things was just kind of, it, it was part of the the soup that, that you know, formed the souffle of me. I don't know, <laughs> soup and souffle. Uh, I got to get my metaphors right. Um, it's totally working. But, but that's how it started. Um, so I... I have a degree in theater and then post graduation um, I kind of flitted around for uh, a while, kind of figuring out who am I and what am I doing and, you know, trying to figure it all out. And I was working at borders um, and uh, I, I was working in century city and it was really cool because I was surrounded by books and movies and TV. It was just a great place to like figure this stuff out. Um, there were agents coming in and, uh, you know, celebrities. It was very, it was like a hop and it was, you know, it was a hop in borders. Um, but it was very, very cool. But what, what kind of started of this all is I was looking through these digital art masters books and I kept coming back to them and being like, Oh my God, this is what people are doing with CG art now. Mm, yeah. It's so cool. I got to learn this stuff. And so I asked my cousin who was working in the game industry to put a list of schools together and Noman was at the top of the list. And so I did my due diligence and I, uh, and I looked at all the schools and I, you know, I, I looked at the board of directors and I looked at who was teaching and like Noman just stood out right away. And it wasn't really a, um, it, it wasn't the school it is today. It was, it was the, uh, it was kind of like a, a training program, you know, I, so I got the CG certificate. So mm -hmm. that was before the the tracks and the the BFA and all that stuff. Um, they added that after I left, and after they added it, I was like, ah, I wanted to <laughs> take that. I would have, I would have stayed. I would have come. Come on. Um, so, it, and and it was the absolutely the the pinnacle of of all the schools that I looked at. Noman was just at the top of the list on everything, and um, so I put together a portfolio. I applied. Um, I got accepted and day one of my intro to Maya class, um, JJ Abrams, you know, walked by and, uh, <laughs> gave his famous tour and now his quote on, uh, on the Noman website. And so like JJ Abrams blessed my, you know, my beginning there. So that was, uh, that was like, I'm in the right place, you know, clearly. And, um, That's I felt, so cool. oh dude, it was so, so rad. And I'm like, uh, all these people walk by and, and Teft is like, hey, you know who that was, right? And we're like, who? And he's like, that was Buke Abrams. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I'm in the right place. And um, and so uh, Noman was the hardest two years I ever worked. Um, I, I really, uh, you put your all into it. It's a very, it was a very tough program. Um, but in the end, I, I met so many amazing people. And one of them was, uh, Jared Morantz, who was teaching at the time. Um, and he gave me my, my step in, uh, you know, my foot in the door, uh, at Aronson's, uh, company. And that was, um, that was several, you know, that was seven years of my life, uh, you know, working for Aaron and, uh, as a concept artist. And, um, and so it, from there I, I began my, uh, my freelance journey and, and, uh, to what I'm doing now. And so, it is, it's been, um, it's all truly thanks to Noman uh, and uh, Alex Alvarez. And Borders. Yeah, and Borders, right? Yeah. And, and what's funny <laughs> is uh, that was also like my first term at Noman was Borders uh, went under. So I was like, clearly I made the right decision because they wanted yes. me to be a manager. And I was like, no, <laughs> like, nah, no, thanks. Um, so clearly I made, I made a good decision. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Borders in the nineties was a cool place to hang out too, man. I, dude, I, I loved it. Uh, we had uh, Peter Jackson come in, and he bought the Hobbit books. He bought like them in bulk for his readers and all this stuff. I'm like, you made oh Lord gosh. of the Rings, shouldn't you have read this by now? <laughs> He's like, oh, what's this? Yeah, um, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, we've I've just got word uh, that we have uh, Marcella Brown backstage getting ready to come out, so I'm going to go and intro. Uh, Marcella, but thank you, Jared. Uh, and thanks for sharing your story. Um, and by the way, I'll give a shameless plug because we still do have a two year program. We've got a certificate program and we got the sure. BFA now. Um, sure. and I think in both of those, or I forget which, which of those, your class is available. Mm -hmm. And if you, if anybody wants a killer workout 
in ZBrush while really getting the ins and outs of creature design and sculpting. Uh, Jared's class is an awesome class. Uh, I took it and it changed my life. It, I, I, it's not a platitude, like it really like totally adjusted my trajectory. It was awesome, yeah. Um, all right, so I'm gonna intro uh, Marcella now. So Marcella has been, uh, she is a, an FX artist and has been working for over four, year, four years in VFX and animation. Uh, some of Marcella's credits include Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, Snyder Cut of the Justice League, uh, James Gunn, uh, the Suicide Squad, among others. And uh, she's currently working at Walt Disney Animation, and her next project is Avatar 2. Awesome. Uh, starting in September 2021 with Weta Digital. Uh, Marcella's role on Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, uh, she tells us, I was working at uh, Scanline VFX while working on this film. The primary tool was Flowline to do the fire, smoke, and water. I worked for over seven months creating the effects with the team uh, for the film. So with that, uh, Marcella, I just want to welcome you to the stream. Thanks for joining us tonight. What's up? <laughs> um, it's really cool to have you with us. Um, now, I already, I already grilled these guys and kind of asked them, you know, some of their story and some of their, some of their background. But um, could you just briefly share a little bit about yourself um, and your journey as an artist? Ooh, she's muted, I oh, think. Oh, uh, might have accidentally muted your mic. Just having a couple technical difficulties there. Try to figure out how to get the mic unmuted. It could be on the back end or it could be on uh, Marcella's side. This is the life of streaming though, right? I mean, Everybody's. We. This has happened to literally every single person probably watching the stream right now with the way that we've been living in the last year and a half. Um, no, we can't quite hear you yet, Marcella. Um, what you might try, if if you need to, is you can try leaving leaving the the stream in your browser and re-entering. Uh, I know sometimes just doing that uh, helps kind of reset things. Yeah. If you don't see anything, you're ready. Oh, we got you now. You got me. Oh, yeah. I'm we can hear you. Nice. We can hear. All yeah, right. I had, it, I had it switched to like from the was it the MacBook Pro mic, but I guess that wasn't working. Okay, we gotcha. Know. Yeah, I'm here. But anyway, sorry about that. I was. Late. No worries. <laughs> That's par for the course. Yeah. Uh, streaming's like live television. You just got to roll with whatever happens. Um. So yeah. Yeah. Share with um, us a little bit about yourself. Well, actually, like. I started studying art back in 2010 after I got out the military. But yeah, I was in the, I was in the army first for a while. Wow. Um, yeah. So I did that for like five and a half years, like right after high school. And then like in like, I don't know, when I was like 23 or something like that, that's when I started like uh, studying and I started out as an environment artist. And we, I worked in, uh, in Atlanta for a while doing that, like little small stuff, uh, little startups and um, I had originally gotten into Nomen back, I want to say, in 2014, but then I, but I was still working, so I, I had to wait. So, yeah, so I came to Nomen in 2015, and that's where I really started, like, digging deep into, um, what was it, effects, really. I came there specifically mm -hmm. for effects, nothing else. Um, so I, I kind of, uh, the rest of my classes didn't really matter that much to me, to be honest. Um but yeah, um, that's what I, I what yeah graduated in 2017, and then yeah, my I started off in my first show with NPC, mm -hmm. and we did Godzilla King of Monsters. That was my like very oh, right first on. show, which yep. was crazy. Nice. Um, that's yeah. a cool first job. It was it, it was the craziest show, like, cause you know you when you first starting, like you don't know nothing about the industry, you know nothing about production. All you know is that you want to work, and to for that for that to be the, our first show, and we had like over a thousand shots, like in over sixty effects artists in one floor mm. working on that particular show. It was insane. Um, so after that, I deleted Dumbo uh, with NPC, and then um, I left there, and I went to Scanline. That's where I spent like mm -hmm. the bulk of my time in uh, Montreal. That's where I was the whole time. And so, yeah, Scanline, we started off in Midway. Um, that was crazy. That was like the biggest show of, well, Godzilla was pretty big, but this one was like the, a big, like realistic show, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, with that, a ton of visual effects yeah, for what they had to do in that to, movie. Like, yeah, the director sent us a ton of uh, reference, and we had mm -hmm. to like match what happened in the battle, like from the video that they they took, all those videos they took. So that was like our first lesson in like <laughs> real huge, uh, I don't know, realistic scale. Mm -hmm. and have to match what exactly what it would look like if something like that was to happen again hopefully never um but yeah that was cool and then Godzilla versus Kong started and yeah seven uh, over seven months we worked on that show and um I guess what we did I don't know some I, I think it was over 700 shots we did Wow. For that particular, yeah. Um, Holy Scanlon crap. Had, Scanlon, had like a bulk, <laughs> Scanlon had the bulk of the movie from what, wow. I, what, what we were told. So, yeah, we did everything you saw in the um, in the reel. If you haven't watched it, I, should, I guess I should share it on the screen. But um, I guess I can let it play. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that in just a moment. Oh, cool. Um, or, or, sorry. Uh, we'll make sure we got everybody's screen shares ready and stuff like that. Okay. Um, oh. But just as we're, as we're wrapping up, uh, just hearing a little bit about you, I'm curious to know, um, and I'm sure it happens a number of different ways, depending on what position you're in in the pipeline. But yeah. Godzilla versus Kong, essentially, the studio you're working at picked up a large portion of the visual effects for the film. And yeah. then what happens? Do they just tell you, hey, by the way, you come into work one morning and they're like, you're going to be working on Godzilla versus Kong? Or I like, mean, how does well, that work? Well, while I was working on Midway, like, mm -hmm. there is already like leads, you know, because leads dev out the shots before mm -hmm. you know, we come on later. Because I was still a junior at the time. So well, I was working on Midway, and then I saw my lead. He was in the background working on like shots and dev for um, for Godzilla vs. Kong. So that okay. was already going on because Jared, we had just got a Mecha ingested into, nice. the, into the, the thing. So we were looking at it like, whoa, and we couldn't tell anybody. <laughs> couldn't tell anybody. So for like over a year, it was like hush, hush type of thing. But um, yeah, that was that was dope. That was a really cool show and I got a lot of like responsibility on that show over uh some sequences for the first time so yeah I learned a lot yeah no that's incredible and what what it and you've worked on a lot of really cool projects just hearing you go down like some of the various jobs you've had those are yeah. tremendous movies yeah it's been a blessing for sure very very cool um all right so I know that each of you have prepared a little bit of show and tell for us tonight um from what you guys did uh contributing to Godzilla versus Kong and um, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll let you guys decide amongst yourselves who, <laughs> what order you'd like to go in, in terms of presenting. I don't know if there's like a pipeline order that we can follow or. Let, let's, let's start with Matt. Yeah, he's okay. the goal, right? Let's, let's oh, that's right. It's very late where you are. That's right. Matt. Yeah. Let's yeah. start with me. Let's start okay, with cool. whatever Jared and, uh, says, whatever Jared says goes, bro. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, he's got the stormtrooper in the background, so made Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, while while Matt's getting his screen share ready, I'll just say, guys, as well as usual, um, we're going to be devoting some time after these guys share uh, to take as many questions as time permits from the chat. So do feel free to type your questions in the chat. I'm doing my best to monitor, um, but as we get towards uh, the end of the last presentation, I'm going to be referencing back to the chat and uh, trying to uh, take as many of your questions as we can. And yeah, with that, have... Matt, you have the floor. Am I here? Yes. Okay. Is that an existential question? Or... Right. It was honestly, I'm looking, I'm, you can't see it's off camera, but I'm staring into the void. Um, fellow humans, here I am. My name is Matthew Millard. I go by Matt Millard. And today we're talking about the war bat. Mm. Yes. Uh, you know, this dude, I just, I want to address a couple of things before we get into it. If you've seen the movie, which hopefully you have, these are spoilers. Uh, Kong never would have made it out alive. He never would have made it, man. Unless those humans in the little helicopter shot him. You know what I mean? I mean, this guy, the war bat, he would have done it. So anyways, what we're looking at now is uh, this is the initial concept for the war bat. We went through we went through some different versions to get here. So I'm going to show you where we started. We started with this guy. 
<clears throat> and uh, just to off the bat, I know we have questions at the end. Just to off the bat do this right now, the only question I get about this design is why did they change the name to Warbat? And I can tell you that literally no one knows. I talked to the director. It was Nozuki in the script. That's the information we got. It's just a funny little tidbit. I think it happened in merchandising. Anyways, so we get the job in house and there is some, uh, the direction is we want a flying, some sort of flying uh, reptilian kind of snake kind of thing but also 90% blue sky, like show them some, show them some stuff. You know what I mean? And this design honestly has my heart. It's, it's got this kind of insect insectoid arthropodic kind of feel with these giant limbs that it can kind of crawl on, spring up and fly through the air kind of thing. <clears throat> I sent him this version and we went on, and I sent him this version. I think it started with two versions uh, for me personally on this uh, on this job. And they responded in several different ways to both of them. And we started to kind of work on them. They were like, okay, it wasn't really hitting the mark, guys. Um, but the director absolutely loved, Adam Wingard loved this version. And he was like, this might be a male counterpart. We might have to rewrite. Mm scenes we might have to get in there and make this a male to the eventual female uh, war vet or war bat um and that just i mean dude got me hooked just quick quick preface i've been watching godzilla movies since i was a child going to blockbuster family video whatever you call it godzilla versus smog i've seen it like 70 times as a as a bit on vhs i don't know why that one but i love love these movies and so I was very, very excited to <clears throat> be surrounded by all these wonderful artists working on this project. And he responded really well to this one. And I really liked this one, too, because I had these ideas about its functionality. And in between these two designs, we started to pursue uh, different kind of tertiary options. They're like, OK, so we've got this crazy thing. It's flying around. It's trying to fight Kong. It's in the hollow earth. It needs a little bit of Godzilla's des design language, which which you can kind of see in like the ribbage of the stomach or in the other version, the uh, the scalage kind of on the back of the tail is, is taken just a little bit from Godzilla. It was kind of meant to feel like it was all, uh, you know, familiar in the hollow earth, right? <clears throat> and so between these designs, we started exploring. They're like, okay, so to spice them up, uh, maybe they have some sort of ability, or maybe they, maybe they have a little bit of Godzilla energy, or maybe they can shoot electricity, or maybe they have weaponized tails, right? Um, and so we started going through these very subtle, and this is very common in visual, or uh, sorry, in concept art. I'm used to talking about production. In concept art, very common to just throw out like several versions, very small changes to kind of just spark the brain of the director or the art director, whoever's who, whoever the client is you're talking to. And so maybe let's zoom in a little bit, <clears throat> let that resolve. Look at how mean that guy looks. He's just upset, you know, he wants to eat something. It's great. It starts off with a normal tail. I haven't paid too much attention to it, honestly. But they're like, hey, maybe it turns into some crazy stuff. And I'm like, okay, it breaks off. Maybe it's prehensile. Maybe it kind of like opens up like a flower mouth. It's got a little thingy come out and grab you. You know what I mean? Um, and this, this is all... This is all normal stuff. Like you're just kind of banging stuff out in design to see what hits, to see what sticks, you know, because honestly, guys, like you're working on this for like a day or two, like two days, three days, three days maximum in where we were at the time for this job. I know that's not the same across the board, but in this time it was like, hey, I have designed a thing and now they need versions and so you're just banging up versions very small versions 
It started with him. This is the second iteration. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling. Um, but no, same, no, cool. same, same process right here. They liked this one. They liked elements about this one. And as you will see, um, you know, in, in, the, in the final design, I mean, like these kind of hinged these kind of hinged arms with these talons, they ended up in the in the final design. It's a mixture between kind of this version and uh, the next version. But we did the same iterations. They were really feeling these two. They were like, okay, I like this one for the male. We're kind of working on this version right here. And they're like, hit us with some different tail options. You give them two stingers. Maybe he comes in and gives you a little double scorpion sting uh, and then right here maybe he's got an electric tail this was a big deal like uh and i think it was right around this time they started to kind of eliminate this uh power that these war bats had and eventually what happened is um let's see here like these fins I ended up lifting these fins and went with a very loose third version, which ended up as the base for the Warbat today. And the idea behind it is these kind of almost like fish-like fins. Mm. They were able to articulate at the base. And the entire idea behind this one, I have like these two versions, like this guy was supposed to be the, uh, from what I understand, male version of the Nozuki. And this was supposed to be female version of Nozuki. So we actually spent a lot of time developing both of these, um, <clears throat> both of these versions. And the idea is he has these fins, you know, like two or three layers of fins that can help aer aerodynamically, but also have kind of an artistic, very sexy reveal, right? And so this is, once they started, uh, we, we got a, basically a green light on those two designs. They were like, push forward, push forward, show us what it does. How does it move? Uh, what does it look like on screen? You know, shit like that. And um, man, if that's not bread and butter for uh, concept art, bro, that's whenever, <laughs> that's where you get excited. And you're like, ooh, man, they like my stuff. They want to see how it works. You know what I mean? So this was the this was the the home design of um, original just cobra shape cobra shape of uh, just first first pass was just cobra shape. I was like, you got to have a cobra hood on there, right? <clears throat> but the idea behind it was that it could lay down its fins and still slither like a snake, but then whenever it got some yoosh. A little bit of yoosh. A little bit know. of yoosh. <laughs> I think I know people that say yoosh. Yoosh. Um, but you can get a yoosh in there, it's and you can bust out in. the lady boys and kind of <laughs> look, That's an industry term. The yoosh is, is an uh -huh. industry term. It's like, yeah. it's like a green yeah, bull. Yeah. You got your yoosh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. the yoosh. Yeah. So you hit them with the yoosh. But this was uh, – let's hide that. Yeah. I mean, just, just even this in general. Like, A – Dude's scary. Like he's got all these weird little holes in his head. That's kind of mm -hmm. weird. And we might have touched on it earlier. Uh, scary is my jam. And I will give you a quick, a very secret insider thing. I'm gonna hop. I'm gonna hop ahead a little bit. This is oh, one that. of the. Whoa. This is one of, this is like the first take on the final head study that I did so cool. later down the road. But I want to let you know. My reference and inspiration from this was the scariest character in, in uh, Mortal Kombat, Baraka, because he's got all those crazy mm -hmm. teeth, mm -hmm. and you can yeah. see it like it's like, dude. And so whenever they said they wanted scary and sexy, that's where I went, <laughs> right? I went with the full Baraka head, needly kind of snake teeth, but you can see the imprints on the kind of like from the jawline. It's a little... It's gross. Where are we at? Okay. And so this initially led to other um, function studies of Nozuki A, as I call them. This was Nozuki A for me, and Nozuki B was the Baraka version, which ended up in the film. 
And Nozugi A, man, I was in love with this thing because it just pranced around on his giant talons and he could get up and get all kind of offensive, you know what I mean? And be like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, dude? <laughs> And we <laughs> we eventually went into because these guys they were they were they were really digging this man and and I was just uh, like a kid in a candy shop right and so we get out of Grayland let's get out of Grayland and then we start going to post studies mm-hmm. and the post studies honestly that is how every time at any time you sell your design because in design you will make the coolest thing you've ever made that anybody's ever seen you'll show it to them like this <laughs> they'll be like well, it looks weak looks dumb looks short looks no looks too strong looks too skinny the second you pose them and like rotate a light well it's all about presentation man and mm-hmm. so you got to sell you the character on film you got to sell its attitude you got to sell its style right And I wanted them to know like what these creatures were doing, what they looked like, how they moved, silhouettes, most importantly. And with this design, Mm -hmm. you know, ultimately I will say right now, this got all the way up to early previs, I believe, Um, but they couldn't write it into the script via all of the reshoots and rewrites that they had. They couldn't work in a separate Nozuki. But this is important and integral to the design of the final because we did these side by side, A and B. Mm-hmm. And you're just sitting here showing them like, okay, or B. it can hang out and attack, you know? Let's see what else we got, what else we got. And then you're trying to show them just interesting, interesting gestures, like give it some character. And that is weird. It looks like an insect, looks like an arthropod, very similar. The lizard apparently frames later it can fly or it can attack you. It's kind of like a defensive gives you a hug. It yeah. could give you gives a, you a hug. hug. It's, it's like one of those guys that hug. gives you like candy corn and Halloween. Yeah. Like yeah. on Halloween, you're like, okay, thanks. Snickers <laughs> outside the door. But this was this was an interesting uh, this was an interesting aspect of the design so that all the wings were separated. Yeah. Right. Like they yeah. they they were very uh, appendage independent, right? But it was able to kind of fold over and act as a glide yeah. for the rest of the monster and be very um, intimidating. But these these swirling shapes that you're seeing always are going to resonate with serpentine and snake forms, and we sold this very well because what ends up happening is I took the original cobra shape and I hit them with two poses, one with the wings down, one with the wings up. Same models, they're folded down. You can see in my mind how it would like slid through the snake. I think originally it was supposed to be a little bit of a longer sequence. Um, But dude, these are the renders that hit the notes that were, we need it to be sexy and scary. These are super cool as well. And that is, that is uh, just the, the energy. The energy in here is what is what they needed to see. They need to see this to be like, man, this thing might be able to rip it up. You know what I mean? Just mm. unfortunately, you got the zero ending. How did you feel seeing your boy's head get ripped off? I can tell you how I felt. Let me show you. It's right here. That's a picture of Sub-Zero. And his fatality <laughs> is ripping a dude's head off. And I gotta say, never been more proud in my entire life. That was awesome. <laughs> he drinks his head off. Yeah. Like, yeah. He like that. dude, I was I was like, hey man, that's that is that's, literally the and then, then he drinks his blood. Yeah. Like, was, were like, those in the design? Really. Was that in the he brief as well? Like, like it needs to be a beverage also? Like just <laughs> no, dude, and, okay. I wish. I wish we had those war, two frames. War that would be so that. sick. Well, the cool, <laughs> what I love about this design is as soon as you see these things on screen, like within seconds, you know what they're about. Like you, you've oh, yeah. got their whole story. And you're, yeah, it's all like, anticipation. Yeah, I absolutely mm-hmm. love these guys. Um, and really cool also to see the other version that 
was supposed to be in as the male version, but to see how that refining process, like you couldn't have gotten to this without the other, you know? And, and yeah. even though sometimes you have to kill your darlings, like that just, that story just finds its way through. I mean, dude, that's, that's, that's the, that is, it is literally a staple point of design is I spent a lot of time on my favorite, had a second option, and then at the last minute on Friday needed a third, and that's the one that got into the film. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But just just to just to wrap it all up, um, we ended up going with this. Well, a at Aaron Sims, we went both on both of the designs. I did. We went all the way to the end, and it wasn't until honestly years later. This is like four years ago. It wasn't until years later I uh, learned that only one of them was making it, which is oh, okay. still, it was still, it was like, dude, I got one of my dudes in there, right? But there was a time where we went through a lot of different wing variations. These are only three of them. Um, you've already seen the, the Cobra. Uh, I think I ended up doing anywhere from four to six versions of wing configurations. Um, and... You'll see kind of like what I was saying. These are very fast, iterative. It's like it's Friday. They want versions on the wings. And you're like pushing, pulling, hitting render, maybe painting over, more than likely not, right? Like you're just like, hey, does this look right? Is this sticking, right? But again, posing always. And so I have these two versions, these two versions of wings. And this last one, pretty close to final configuration but what i did with every one was i gave them their own i gave them their wow. own body their own energy right and guys on a technical standpoint how i did this shout out to Noman school of visual effects for being a pretty <laughs> generalist i made rigs for both of these models oh I made rad these models love it Very garbage rigs but they were posing rigs and so whenever the job came in show us this i did about 120 percent more they were like hey we want a version on the wings and i was like well i'm going to give you 12 images you know what i mean it was Love fucking it. Godzilla, man I can't, I can't we couldn't help it and so i ended up posing all of these models hitting them to get those silhouettes those like beautiful silhouettes Boom. to see what they i mean look at that like it's kind of scary you know big hooks like single hooks but and then you can get from look, this dude looks like he's skateboarding this dude's doing a kickflip <laughs> kick this dude is doing a kickflip i love it <laughs> that's, that's, that's gonna be a, a cover of thrasher magazine right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then here we go so this uh from what I have on deck anyways, this was closer to, you know, they, they mixed this with like two other elements of the other uh, designs, but we really just right here, like this image right here, just that, yeah. that, that energy. That's like, I am here to literally stab you in the head and make you perish. That's what he's doing. From, from he the does. stabbing in the head. It, it's from the, it's in the head. In the head. <laughs> <laughs> is that so is that a psychological stabbing it's like kind of head it's all in the head i think these are amazing yeah, well thank you so um, much man. Yeah. <laughs> we uh we ended on we ended on head studies we did very light uh very light head studies i did two head studies for both of the nozuki a and b and we did plenty of versions on the eyeballs, none of which is interesting to show. Just imagine the eyeball being red, green, black, white. Um, but with this one, this was the original intent, was to have three of those eyeballs. That was the original intent. But yeah, that's uh, that's where we that's where we ended on. We passed it off. I delivered the models for uh, rigging years and years ago, and. Mm -hmm. It has turned into the the juice factory for Kong now that well, I have seen. It. How long was that process from start to finish? Like when you first started working on these concepts to when you sent off the last one? Man, I'm trying to think, dude. We, I think uh, GVK came in, and, and the job. <clears throat> I'm about to be incredibly inaccurate. Anybody in the comments, someone tell me. 
Uh, I think that we worked on Godzilla versus Kong for about a month, but all of the artists started on uh, Mecha Godzilla, and then we started going towards um, the Nozuki stuff. And I think I spent a maximum of two weeks, but two weeks being you're doing two days of work, getting notes on Friday, sending something out Friday, Monday coming back to notes, two days, two day break. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but, and so those, those pose renders and all that stuff, I mean, dude, literally banging it out. Like, I'm like, I have already set up my model. I took half an hour and set up a rig. I'm just fucking I'm like pressing buttons. I'm like, render, render, render. You know what I mean? <laughs> like there's, there's no time to sit there and mm -hmm. pay stakes out and do all that crazy stuff so i would say probably maximum of two weeks uh yeah more than yeah. likely work days uh eight i have no idea though could be well like uh, yeah like concept artists it's kind of like dog years right like a day is like a month like yeah. that's oh, how much, dude. How much oh, iteration dude. you're cramming in there yeah, you know? oh. that that's is the most accurate, accurate statement I've ever heard. Heard. <laughs> why is it so short I, that makes so much sense oh so, Jared, oh you're God. like you're like what, uh, 285 years old. Uh -huh. in yeah. Years, so, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, in concept oh years, God. yeah, dude, yeah. It's oh just like God. dog years, except more. Um, ah. uh, Matt, we've got a few questions that came in for you during your presentation that we can uh, address really quickly. I figure it's better to do it on the heels of what you've just done. Um, oh, cool. So uh, the first is from Dope Pope. Gotta love these screen names. Um, wow. Dope Pope. Dope That's Pope says, Matt, boy. awesome work. <laughs> awesome work on the Warbat. Absolutely sexy design. Question, was the King Cobra from Godzilla, uh, let's see. Oh, was the King Cobra from Godzilla animated series an inspiration at all to your designs? No, I actually, um, uh, so I redact what I said earlier. There are two questions that I get, and one of them is the King Cobra from the show uh, Influence, cool. and the other one is uh, why did they name it Warbat? It was not, uh, and I will tell you um, some bad advice. To <laughs> I will tell you some bad advice. I didn't use the only reference I used on this was a picture of Baraka for Mortal Kombat. I straight up didn't do. I was like, in order to get away from all of their designs, I'm just gonna take mm -hmm. in the literally the job description is scary flying snake. That's all I got. Mm. And it was like, here we go. The second you start to look up that kind of stuff, it really influences you on what to do and what not to do. And you can get very confused on that stuff. Um, not to sound ignorant or naive or anything, but um, it's actually my pleasure to say that it was not a uh, influence on the design. Although that design is absolutely killer. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, you heard it here. If you want to be a professional concept artist, all you need is Mortal Kombat reference. That is so one, true. One image will get the job done. And then, <laughs> you know, a day later, you'll be five years older. That's how it works. Um, so uh, another question for you, Matt. Um, did you start with a sketch first or did you go straight to 3D software for, for these designs? Uh, straight to 3D. And actually how it happened was, now that I'm remembering it correctly, before the job came in, I think there was a, this happens a lot as well, kind of a, uh, proof of concept kind of section. And it was like, hey, we're going to throw a couple of artists on this one job that might be coming in. They just want to make sure. And it was head sketches. Um, <clears throat> head sketches of dragons, I think is what it mm. was. And uh, yeah, I just started full blown 3D. They gave me the notation to be scary, which again, is my language. And so I made uh, a scary dragon head. And um, awesome. Awesome. I always, I, I, not always, but the 3D is, it's like sculpture, man. Every angle is what matters because being a production artist as myself, you get issues with 2D and 2D is absolutely beautiful. It's gorgeous. Everything complements sandwich. Whenever you're trying <laughs> production apps, uh, production assets off of 2D sketches, you're looking at nightmares, man. So I 
I tend to stay in 3D. Well, and once you like get enough mileage in ZBrush too, it's really easy to sketch in ZBrush. You know, you just can pull, I, I learned that from Jared. Um, you can just push and pull stuff around and come up with some cool shapes and, and start going from there. Um, I think the last question we got for, for Matt is, um, how do you make textures and colors pop while keeping the realistic feel? Is there like room for experimenting in that area? Um, and I mean, I'll even reference the image you've got up right now. Here you've got amazing sculptural information just in the value read, but you've got these really awesome textures and then color popping. Like how are you, what's, without having to do a full blown demo, like how are you approaching that? Are you doing it all at the same time? Are you getting value reads first and then popping in color or what's going on there? What a great question. That's a great <laughs> question, dude. Uh, so number one, <clears throat> Miguel Ortega taught me this. It has to be in the model. It always has to be in the model every time. So all of these scales you see in this, and let's just use it as an example. Uh, all of this stuff, it's all sculpted in there. There's no mm. extra magic happening. These are literally like beauty renders with like other renders on top of it and then some texture overlays to get gotcha. like yeah. your kind of uh, grungy backdrop and grungy noise, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not getting into compositing notes, but this actually comes from a heavy understanding of look development, texturing, and lighting. And once you understand how all of these elements work together, you can make them really work in concept if you do just a tiny bit of setup in the front end. Mm. So there's a hundred ways to do uh, concept art. <clears throat> um, Sometimes you'll bang out a really soft model and just start getting the lighting information. And then you're going to photo bash and paint everything in. That's not what I do, and that's not what this is. This is always trying to sculpt an asset that is like 80 to, well, 90, 75 to 85% there, right? 85 getting pretty, getting pretty serious, but you want a lot of the information in your model because this is what production uh, artists will take information from. Meaning this, once you understand a curvature, displacement, geometry, subdivision, all of these things in a lighting scenario on how to apply textures and using ambient occlusion to mask and blah, 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 you can use that kind of information in Keyshot in a conceptual form. So mm -hmm. my model's 30 million polygons. You send it over, it's got all the crazy stuff, right? And there is, I think I've painted like in Keysh or in a ZBrush, I think I've painted a little bit, just colors. You bring okay. those over to a material, right? So mm -hmm. you paint your Z tool every time, every time paint your Z tool. You bring it over and you're going to switch it over to a material to where it's not going to make your shit look crazy. But what you're going to do is have to bust into the material graph and start to separate it out like you would in production. And so I literally had this model set up in all of my key shot renders, an entire material. It was like if the curvature was negative, it had a drier speculation. If it was positive, it was a little tighter, it was a little wetter, right? And then I set up graphs and key shot that was like uh, subsurface to this level for the fins. So I'd make like two, two or three materials. I paint everything, but I take my time in, uh, in key shot to graph it out to drive the subsurface values in between the scales based on curvature, on top of the scales based on curvature, and the thickness based on the geometry to where I didn't have to do anything. I would pop it all in, hit render, and then I would render out like, so your normal concept workflow would be like, render out a rough specular pass, a wet specular pass, and a subsurface pass, and some other things, right? At this point, all you really need is like three images. And you wow. just lay it down, Add some sharpen, do, do all your Photoshop stuff, you know, like merge your image and do some crazy stuff and mask it in, you know. But really, like, I got it to where it was so fast 
then I didn't have to mess with it. And that is yeah. that is the benefit of being a generalist is being able to open up key shot and being like, okay, I can get into a material graph. I can make my roughness and my wetness on these parts and I don't have to do anything. I just got to paint my model in ZBrush, kick it over, and do some Photoshop. Does that makes that so much sense. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, no, I, I love it. And uh, it makes a lot of sense too, because like all these absolutely beautifully rendered um, uh, poses and gestural, like all the stuff you're able to kick out, like after you go through that process, you just talked about once, now you don't ever have to do it again, or you have to do very, very little afterwards. And you could just, now you can just pose and you can render and you can do a turnaround, you can do all this. And exactly. that's, that's amazing. That's great. Exactly. And that's, uh, that's part, part of my fault for being uh, a victim of my own success, but they asked for one image and I gave them like seven. And so every time they asked for another variation, it was like, well, yeah. shit, you know, gotta figure out the fast way to do this. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good <laughs> secret sauce to have, right? I mean, yeah, I mean all that yeah, yeah, generalist yeah. knowledge goes a long way. Yeah, and uh, Noman guys, take your 3D generalist class. Every class you think that doesn't matter, take it. Rigging. Uh, the nerve modeling, all of that stuff, the things you don't want to do, take that and yeah, learn it. That. You will yeah, be the most it. valuable artist that you know because you can say yes to literally everything or also be like, yeah, I can learn how to do that. I have a tiny bit of experience doing that. That's how I was able to rig and pose these models and get poses out just like you know, 15 poses in two days. You're just posing totally. and and is doing crazy stuff, man. Like, do it, killer. Yeah, love it. Well, Matt, thank you very much. That was that was rad. I mean, just rad enough to see your design, but then to hear about some of the process and how the reason why you did what you did and how you approached it. I I could nerd out all night on that, but um, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna move forward um, to our two other artists we have here. Um, let's see. What should we draw straws or? Uh, who should we have go next? I'll, I'll go. Okay, Jared. Ooh, the big boy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's all, all right. Let's all go together. Let's go. All on right. Let's do it. It's a, it, it it follows along. So uh, right. Okay. Cool. We're yeah. telling the story, yeah. right? It's all yeah, in the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Concept to to come, you know, start to finish. Concept mm -hmm. uh, on on the way there. So, uh, hi, I'm Jared. I'm a concept artist. Uh, I do creatures and monsters and characters and costumes and uh, all all those things uh, kind of uh, character related. So uh, I was uh, uh, working at Legacy Effects uh, in house at the time uh, when Godzilla vs Kong came in, and uh, my supervisor and uh, uh, our project coordinator uh, Damon Weathers and and my supervisor Lindsay uh, McGowan. Uh, they came to me one day and and they're like, hey, uh, we got this show in and uh, we're going to be starting on that next week. And I'm like, cool, great, very excited. Um, and then they, they're they like, it's Godzilla vs. Kong. And I'm like, oh, sweet. Yeah, here we go. Uh, and then I think it was the next, because they didn't tell me like what I would be doing specifically. Um, but they, I think it was the next day um they're like it's mecha godzilla and i went oh okay so we're doing mecha godzilla and uh and i and i said to damon i was like you know i did mecha godzilla for ready player one and he's like yeah you did and so uh so i was like okay here we go we're we're doing mecha godzilla again so um that's kind of how it it starts um they're like hey show's coming in uh you know, just prepare for that with whatever that means for you. And, and, uh, for me, it's, you know, I'm collecting references. I'm looking at, uh, uh, resources, images online, collecting data, whatever it is. So, um, that was that. And, uh, myself and three other artists at legacy effects were tasked with designing, uh, designing Mecha Godzilla. So, um, you know that when you're starting a character that other people are going to be doing this character as well. So you're, you're not jumping in, uh, you know, kind of blind. Uh, you, you know, that 
everybody's going to jump on this as well. So some other artists did uh, some really uh, spectacular work, when, and that's Darnell Isom and uh, Simon Weber. So it was kind of the three of us were tasked with um, with doing some Mechagodzilla designs. And um, what was cool was that all three of us came up with just wildly different versions. Um, and I, I loved... Uh, uh, both Darnell's and and Simon's, their 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 work was brilliant, and um, truly, it could it could have gone in any different direction um, based on the, the director's whim. Um, uh, the one reference that we got from production was uh, was a stealth fighter. Um, they liked the sleekness of the stealth fighter, and um, that was that was really it. There was no kind of prior. Yeah, there was no kind of prior hey, make it look like this or make it look like this. It was just kind of like, this is the one reference that we like and here you go. Um, so that was it. Like we didn't have any anything else. So uh, work began and um, the only th asset that I really had to start with was they gave us, um, uh, Le uh, Legacy Effects also designed on uh, prior Godzilla shows um, all the way from Godzilla 2014 all the way up to... Um, uh, King of the Monsters. So I knew that it was a possibility that, you know, something might come in. Um, so they already had, you know, Godzilla experience. So I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just here for the ride. And um, so they, they pulled, uh, uh, they pulled out the Godzilla model that uh, production had given them. And so I took that model and that was kind of my, I used that Godzilla as a base and then built out from there so uh come with me on this journey join me now as we go yeah dive, dive deeper so i'm in pure ref uh awesome. if you want to know so uh so i've set up this kind of like strip so this was my first pass at um at mecha godzilla and um you know very very much in the body shape of godzilla himself uh, because they, they didn't give us any notes. So my first thought was, okay, robot Godzilla. Um, and that, that's just kind of where my modus operandi was coming from. Um, so, you know, I built it out. It took about a week uh, to, to build out about four days. Um, and it was, you know, it's, it's kit bashing, it's modeling, it's, um, it's assembling things together. Uh, so that's, that was kind of how I went with it. And I, you know, I had no clue what the story was with it. I didn't know what they were going to do with them. You know, they, they don't tell you any of this. They don't, they don't, you know, occasionally you might get script or a description. Uh, you might get, you know, uh, talking with the director or anything. In this case, it was like, nope, just make a Mecha Godzilla. So you're like, okay, cool. So, so what I did, you know, uh, is I, put myself in the mind of kind of like an engineer uh, of a Mecha Godzilla engineer uh, or designer. Like why would they build this? What were they doing? You know, cause in, in that time you have to work, all you have are just your thoughts. Um, and you're, you're just kind of like, you know, in the time it takes to assemble this, you're like, okay, well, maybe they put this here for a reason, you know, hydraulic pistons and, and uh, flexible ribbing and, and things like that. So that, that was just kind of my my you know kind of moving forward like okay how how advanced is the technology you know that's another question is uh you know if if i went too clean cut with the lines it would look futuristic do they want that i don't know i was trying to do just stuff that was different than rpo because rpo was very traditional mecha godzilla you know um you know, smooth plating, very large arms and rocket fingers and things like that. So uh, that's that's kind of where I went is. And I was thinking about scale on top of this, like the structures that were, you know, supporting this because, you know, for one, uh, he's going to be huge. It's going to be enormous. And, and a person's body would be very tiny. So I figured they were building these things kind of like structured. And um, mm -hmm. I didn't think that they were, you know, this was going to be a uh, futuristic sleek mecha Godzilla. This is built by man, uh, hasty, maybe hastily assembled, you know, cause they're like, Hey, we, you know, Titans are coming, you know, we got, you know, we got to build our defense now, you know? So it's not like, nice. 
you know, it's not like they had years of development to just sit there and be like, mm, let's make a few, you know, whatever. So this was something that was maybe hastily built. That's kind of what, what I was thinking about. I love uh, the webbing on the plates, by the way. On the yeah, uh, That's a really uh, yeah, cool idea. Like this crisscross patterns, uh, decimating the model and, and Z modeler, just pull that, pull that stuff out. Uh, uh, I'm going to try and slip some of those little ZBrush things in there. Nice. Um, and, and then they're like, okay, make it glow. Uh, you know, because we want to see the glow. Uh, my initial thought was kind of nuclear green because I figured mm. they were doing nuclear uh, stuff inside or, uh, you know, fusion reaction, you know, something like that. So uh, I figured green, green Godzilla, you know, might look cool. Who knows? Uh, and then I, I, I wanted to give them, you know, multiple different views of everything. Um, I also figured he would be dirty uh, just from testing uh you know in addition to being hastily built you know he they were going to be testing this thing as they're going you know they're testing fingers and you know doing tests of like the fist running into a wall you know and they just do that over and over again you know i figured this would take years to build and assemble and uh so things like that so that that's just kind of my like it's dirty from testing it's you know maybe hastily built uh you know humans are on a, a ticking time bomb here you know uh the, the titans could uh you know come back at any minute you know so that's kind of that was my 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 thought uh pattern uh as i was going here and what i tried to do is i tried to show them you know here's it here's the design at a distance here's it close here's a three quarter let's look at the design let's get some time to you know absorb it so i'm trying to give them you know many different shots uh that that are going to feel cool that they might be excited about you know things like that um, and so we, we presented these to, uh, the meet in the meeting. Um, so we, that was our, that was our kind of like first meeting. And I also did, um, uh, a silver pass as well, you know, just a, a dirty metal, uh, oil covered, you know, um, mechanized, uh, monstrosity. I'm a big fan of this front front view just cause I'm, I was trying to, uh, invoke samurai armor, you know, with oh, the, yeah. the segmented armor. Uh, kind of uh, on the way down. I love the I love the little the little blur on the eyes there. Yeah, perfect. yeah, yeah. Gotta, perfect. You know, boom. Like he's. Yeah, no, you know, it's pops. This, thing's, this thing has to ooze personality. Yeah. It's even though it's a, a, a you know it's a mechanized creature. You know he's he's anthropomorphic uh, on on top of that, and he's got personality. So you wanna you wanna let that exude through the image. You know what I mean. You gotta you gotta feel that as you're working at, and that's kind of part of what like the sound effects are. You know, when we're making sound effects, we're like totally, you know. But you you want to feel something, you know, uh, pull off of the the page, you know, and like strike right into your heart, you know, right right through your eyeballs. Um, so then, you know, working on uh, uh, same thing. I was I was doing you know front, side, back, you know, trying to show them you know as many different views uh, as possible. Just so they, you know, have stuff to look at, you know, things that they can make decisions on. You you don't really get the opportunity to explain your decision process to them. Uh, you're not sitting there in a room being like, "Hey, so I'm thinking this, this, and this. Huh? What do you think?" You don't you don't have that opportunity. It's um, your 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 job is to speak through the image, and and you hope that that comes through. Um, so a lot of this is just combination, uh, kind of what Matt talked about is combination, you know, render passes uh, on top of it. So you have your base model. Uh, I, did, I would do like a steel pass and I would do a rust pass. And then I would do like a high steel pass, like a high polish pass where, where everything is super shiny. Um, and then I would paint and erode away scuff marks in Photoshop. So I was doing this kind of on each image as I'm repping out, like, you know, I've I think this in one week I did like 40 images, something like that. Uh, that was just, you know, in, in the one week of, of like trying to, so each image that I'm doing is like, you know, I'm, I'm painting and eroding away metal uh, to reveal like the shiny metal underneath. Remember I'm thinking this is very damaged and used and, and um, kind of like real steel uh, as well. Like it's just, it's just beat up. It's not perfect. Yeah. It, this is uh this thing has just been wrecked over and over again, and then they're going to send it out and fight, you know, Godzilla. So it has to be able to stand, you know, withstand the the punching and the tests of time and 
you know, all that stuff. So, so that's just my thought process in there. And, you know, uh, we, we then presented our work. Uh, so our first meeting, meeting uh, Adam and the producers and the writers, um, that was our first kind of presentation meeting. Um, and uh, Simon Weber is in the UK, but it was, you know, me, Darnell, uh, Damon and, and Lindsay, and, and we're just sitting there in the meeting and uh, presenting the work to them. And so, you know, they're, they're excited, uh, you know, because they get to see cool art uh, and, and helps that you're in Legacy's, you know, meeting room, which is just surrounded by toys, just awesome toys. And um, so they're excited, you know, they're excited, but they're also like, you know, work face. You know, uh, so they're they're trying to put on a poker face and you're trying to be, you know, neutral as well. We're professionals. Right. <laughs> and so that's that's kind of what the meeting went went like is um, they presented the images and they were like, this is great. Um, and then we started talking about it. That's when the discussion kind of began and they pointed out things that they liked and didn't like. Um one note was that like all the the pipes and all this stuff was just too busy. And I, you know, I agree with them. Um, a lot of times I'm, I'm working very quickly. So I'm like, mm, this is too much, but I got to keep going. Right. Otherwise I'm going to, if I, if I nitpicked every decision I made, I'd never get anything done. So that was kind of what was happening. And I also, in my presentation, I presented some open images, um, of the inner workings of, uh, uh whoop, whoop, that was back, like sped me up there. That was like the final concept, that right? Was like the fi that yeah. was the final. <laughs> That's the final. Uh, that was the final final. Wow. Uh, so, so I also showed them, you know, the the opening um, in it, and that's what uh, that's what got their interest. Um, mm. You know, and, and I think you know everyone did some really cool versions. Like I said, Simon did some really cool stuff, and so did Darnell. I mean, like everybody's takes were so unique and and that's what's so cool is uh you know you see other artists you know and you're like oh man i didn't i didn't even think i didn't even think about that that's so much cooler than what i did and then um and on top of that you know i i know other artists are working on it at different effects houses as well uh i later found out that that matt did some uh killer mecha godzillas as well and and so you're just like blown away you're like man you guys did stuff that i I didn't put together. I didn't, you know, I didn't think about that. Um, but, uh, you know, they liked, they liked what I did. They liked uh, the, you know, that I was showing how it was built. Um, and they said they liked that because the inner structure uh, had some kind of bigger part to play in the story. So that was, um, that was why they, they liked that. Um, so that's why they jumped onto it. And, you know, this, this part felt a little too cybernetic, too futuristic. Um, that was one note that they had, you know, it was, it looked like cybernetic ribs and I, you know, I agree with them. Um, you know, I'm like, okay, cool. That's a cool direction. Let's, you know, or that's a different direction. Let's go this way. You know, I'm just trying to throw stuff out and hope that it's a conversation starter. You know, that's what, that's what it's about. Um, so they, they really dug this and I think they liked this one specifically. Uh, because of the the kind of inner mech workings um, and stuff going on, so this was uh, this was kind of a hit for them, and that's what they said. Hey, we like this one. Let's keep going forward. And so that was kind of like, okay, great, we did it. Uh, round round one, uh, we we made it. And uh, so here's uh, some just general grayscale stuff, so you can see uh, how it you know how it looks. Uh, a lot of the stuff with the legs, uh, you know, that, that really didn't change much, uh, you know, or the, the torso or some of the underpinnings, um, all the under stuff, uh, undercarriage, a lot of that ended up staying the same kind of throughout, um, because if they don't comment on it, you know, don't change it. They, I, they like it, you know, so, uh, the things that they didn't like were the samurai armor. They, they spotted that and said like, well, we, we don't like that. It feels transformers. And you're like, okay, what does that mean? All right. Yo, that is tight though. <laughs> yeah, it is tight. It's rad. It's rad AF. Right. So, so you're just like, okay, cool. Um, this one, the blueprint came from, you know, I was doing, uh, you know, doing all these renders and I just, I thought, man, I would love to do a tune shader. And what was what's so cool about Lindsay uh, McGowan, my supervisor, 
is he's so open to like suggestions and changes and and like following your artistic instinct um lindsay's just like uh and and lindsay on top of that he's he's got ideas man that are just he just like hits you with the curveball and you're like that's brilliant um so he i i showed him this and i was like hey what do you think if i did this and he's like i love it go for it and um so I was like, yeah, cool. So I put together this little blueprint just using a tune shader uh, in uh, in Keyshot. And, you know, I put together this little kind of like, oh, blueprint. Uh, again, I was putting myself in the mind of an engineer. Uh, and, and at this point, I'm like, uh, I started adding like little uh, dialogues and things that just like I'm, I'm coming up with science jargon. Uh, so I was like, hyper cables and stabilization. Full on. Full on nerd mode engage now. Yeah, I, I was. That uh, is so uh, sick. <laughs> I, was doing the, I was doing the Star Trek stuff where you just like absolutely tie stuff together. And there's even uh, I, I learned uh, some scientific jargon uh, like generators, and so I was like pulling stuff off of those too. Uh, and and no one was ever going to read this, but but me. And I was <laughs> like foot and ankle structures for maximal, you know, uh, uh, maximizing, you know, whatever. And the, um, speaking of maximize okay so so that's how i i snuck that in you know what i mean it was it was something like i don't know if they'll like it but i'm gonna sneak it in and later in the movie when they're showing mecha godzilla you can see they're using like these side blueprints to point out power so, so that was something that made it kind of through and i was Love like it. that that that's the power of art and that's the power of ideas you know as well dude um, jared you have to put you have to zoom in on some of those uh some of those call outs like on your oh. insta feed or something like that i'm sure oh, that we yeah, would all love to read those yeah, yeah. That's a good idea um yeah I'll, I'll kind of pick pick some of those apart absolutely so cool and then uh here's the uh godzilla uh you know and mecha godzilla uh you know just side by sides you know just to show you know uh silhouettes uh and that became also an important part is is uh you know the differenti differentiating their their silhouettes you know making sure that they they didn't look the same on screen uh because that was something that was concerning to them they were worried if they were the same height or you know whatever that you know so all their decisions that they're making you're like yeah okay i get it that makes sense uh here's an early version that i didn't render uh but you can see that you know this was uh some just gobbledygook that i'm like trying to they're like hey we need another version i'm like okay um so, so this is where I'm just trying like some other plating and he looks kind of like armadillo esque. So I thought that might be a, it looks very classic Godzilla yeah. to me too. It looks like it could be a suit that some guy could be wearing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And, uh, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe it's got, you know, the robotic plates, you know, look like shingles that maybe mm -hmm. resemble scales, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, I'm, I'm glad I didn't take this one to, to, to render. But it's important to show the exploration, you know, just maybe the, there's like these little individual scales that move. You don't know. Your your job as a concept artist is to just throw out what ifs, you know, and, and let the director answer those what ifs. Um, because, uh, you know, the director is the one making the decisions. They're, they're coming. Your job is to present options and their job is to decide on options. Um, so that's that was week one, right? That was week one of just repping out art um you know i'm fired up and it, it was just a blast dude it was so much fun working on um and then uh round two uh so uh ingesting their notes their notes were we want the silhouettes to be very different um you know we have to be able to read them separately on on screen and so you go okay cool and this is where I landed. Um, I slimmed him up. I slimmed up the torso because I thought I'm, I'm going to go to opposites here. Godzilla is fat. I'll make him thin. Uh, Godzilla has tiny arms. I'll give him big boxy arms. Godzilla's got big stubby legs. I'll make him super mobile. Um, and then some some tweaks I made uh, to the tail were like adding the, the fish fin uh, kind of tail, um, giving this kind of like undershape here. And that was kind of to make the, the tail look more unique, uh, make it, you know, the silhouette more, uh, you know, add some negative space in there. And also it evokes uh, skeletal, um, you know, the, the skeleton. And that was a note from John Rosengrant, uh, who was in one of the meetings with us. And uh, John Rosengrant is a uh, special effects uh, wizard and legend in his own right. And so when, you know, when he chimes in with the note, you, 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 that's that's a good idea 
Um, and, and so he said, you know, this thing has to be a Terminator. And, mm. you know, he worked on the Terminator. <laughs> so, so you're like, I get it. And, and he's not saying this has to look like a Terminator exactly, but he was trying to say this has to evoke the spirit of. And um, because I'm at Legacy, I go downstairs and I stare at the T1. You know, they got the, the T800 there. And <laughs> so I, cool. just, I went down and I just I stared at it, you know, for like probably too long, like uncomfortably long, at least 15 minutes. And I just stared at it and I just like, I let the spirit of the T1000, like, I, I just absorbed it, you know, and I, and I, and I started dissecting it. Like, why is it scary? Cause it's skeletal uh, because it evokes nature, but defies it because it's a machine. So this is just the stuff that my brain is like analyzing and, and trying to break down. And, you know, if you can picture the calculus numbers, you know, the matrix, <laughs> you know, this is where I'm doing it. Um, so that's kind of, that was my, my thought process through it. And then the hands, uh, the hands were also a note from them. Uh, they wanted the hands to be different. Um, that, that came from them and they didn't specify, but in my brain, I went, I got it. Um, I knew right away what I wanted. Uh, and it was based on something called mirror hand syndrome where the hand actually looks mirrored across and it's really freaky. And I'm, you know, I'm a horror buff like Matt. Uh, so, so that was kind of where my brain went. I was like, Oh, I got it. And, I knew right away, I was like, I'm going to do this grab claw. And it was just unique, and they loved it. Um, at the end of, of the tail here, that was something I was like, well, I capped off the tail, got to do something, right? Can't just you know have it taper off into nothing. So I put a scorpion tail on it. I was like, will the scorpion make it? I don't know. Maybe they'll want to see options. Again, doesn't matter. Turns out made it all the way to the finish. You know? Yeah, the stinger tail rolls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, I'm giving them options. Um, this one, you know, has a lot more lights, you know, tiny little dot lights, um, giving them color options for the, you know, the inner glow. Uh, again, red, red made it. Um, but I also gave them yellow uh, just as a, as a call to Jidora, um, just to see. And then, uh, you know, same thing that I'm doing is where I'm just giving them lots and lots of options um, of, big medium close here's 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 a really dirty metal right uh and here's one that's a lighter scuffed metal um you know this one you can see just too many lights all over on top of that but i thought they would help give it scale um that was one of their notes they're like get rid of the lights so, uh, so, so. um so this was my my kind of dirty metal pass and uh again i love giving the front view uh, you know, just a, a straight on, like, you know, here's a, uh, you know, a face down. Um, and then I, I gave them, uh, details of the claws as well. And then the, the tail, um, and the claws, uh, man, I, I, I knew what I wanted and, and the buzz saws in the fingers were something I pitched in the room. Um, cause I was like, oh, what if we gave him little buzz saws, you know, in each of the fingers and like he grabs onto Godzilla and goes, Zzz! and, uh, at the time, and, and when I pitched that, they they were kind of like, oh, huh. but I was like, just wait. And so, uh, and and what do you know? It it made it through, it made it all the way to the end. And um, when all that stuff started leaking, I was like, I got I got to see. Did they keep it? Did they keep the fingers? And they kept the fingers. I was like, no, oh, they kept the fingers because uh, that was the, that was the thing I wanted most, really. Um, okay, so then you know, again, showing height, and then again, um, the silhouette being different was really important to them. Uh, they wanted those silhouettes to be very, very different. So I was just thinking opposites the whole time. Uh, Cause I, as I was modeling him, I had Godzilla up next to me and I'm like, Godzilla's kind of got these narrow shoulders. What if I made him boxier? And you know, I'm, I'm also trying to think like, what are Godzilla's weaknesses? How can I take advantage of them? And so I gave him these big old boxer arms. I figure if I gave him a reach, uh, he, you know, Godzilla couldn't do anything to him. Um, and this was, uh, this was a keyframe that I threw it into. Uh, and this is what got them, uh, the next time we had a meeting, uh, this is what got their attention. Um, so, uh, they, they all kind of like, they saw it and they all kind of like went, oh, and they kind of looked around at each other and they were like, not bad. And so I was like, I gotcha. 
Um, <laughs> like I got it. Uh, and that was it. Um, and then I did, you know, some additional like sunset sunset shots just to show like, here's the, you know, so I'm like, here's the design, right? Here's, here's what it looks like. Now here's it in your movie. And yeah. that's what, that's what did it for them. So uh, again, uh, having Lindsay's, you know, support and like, Hey, uh, let me do a keyframe. He, he was like, go for it. And, um, and that got their attention. And then I also did these like, you know, a wild like beam shot. Cause I'm like, we're going to want to see this thing fire. And this was also something that they liked, you know, they wanted to see uh, more. Uh, this was one that I just, I threw, I don't know why I threw this in. Uh, I, it was like a weird color thing. I don't know why I threw it in, but I did. Uh, I, I liked it at the time. And now I'm like, I don't know why I did this. Anyway. Uh, so <laughs> uh, now I, uh, you know, again, now we're just seeing, you know, with the shiny metal, uh, that was one of their asks. And then from there, it, their notes were very simple. It, it wasn't crazy. It was like, let's see some options on some stuff. And, and that was it. It was like, okay, so I tweaked the tail. Uh, they wanted to see options on the, on the claws, like scale wise, how big they were. Uh, maybe there's an extra joint for the wrist. Uh, so you can see that right there. Um, so that that's what it became is let's see some material options. Let's see some just general uh, options. This is kind of like a dirty gray metal, uh, you know, option on top of that. Uh, again, some some options I did where the claws were just ginormous. That was one thing they wanted to see. Again, uh, and as I'm doing this, I'm, you know, I'm refining uh, the design every time I'm refin uh, refining my process. Uh, here's a dirt uh, desert storm. Uh, Mecha G, you know, I, uh, again, I, I didn't know the story. So I thought, okay, maybe the military commissioned this. Uh, I didn't know it was going to be a separate corporation, but I thought, okay, what if the military, you know, commissioned uh, Mecha G makes sense that they would. So let's try a desert storm version. Um, so a lot of fun to do and just kind of play with those um, ideas, you know, as, as you go on and, uh, again, I'm just repping out as many kind of options as I can. This is more shiny material. Uh, this is this became something that they, you know, that they liked and they wanted to see uh, more of. So uh, everything just got put in in different options through the feed, and um, and then they had other other notes, which was like, okay, paint out the tongue. Uh, they didn't want a tongue. Um, that made sense to me. Uh, you know, so and it's it's a cleaner look as well. Try some beam options, um, different materials. Oh, we tried things um, like like single rows or double rows of of dorsal spikes. You know, very simple stuff. Uh, we tried one where he had a dog leg. Uh, you know, that trilateral leg. So obviously, uh, it doesn't. Yo, know, that it. is tight. <laughs> that and, is and, so and, cool. You know, it. it I don't think it works, but uh, uh, we we did it just to see. You know, just to try it. Because again, we're just to say we tried it, you know, uh, but it is pretty fun. It looks, it, it looks, uh, you know, he's got these big pistons in the back, you know, I thought it would be cool. Uh, and then again, you know, every time I'm doing this, I'm like throwing in the silhouettes as well. Just so, uh, so we know what it looks like, you know, uh, making, you know, doing back shots of the dorsal spikes, but, but really the design itself really did not change much after that. Uh, even stuff that I, I thought would change made it in like even this, these little triangle shapes on the back and, uh, these little fins and blades. And I, I just thought that the work that Scanline did on the final model was like, it, I mean, they nailed it, man. It was just, it was beautiful. Um, and then, you know, they wanted to see eye options. The eye was going to be a part of the story as well. So that was important showing them, uh, different kinds of options. You can see just like how much stuff I'm producing. I also, um, well, I'll get I'll get a little bit further, but uh, and then uh, showing, um, let's see, there you go. showing uh, what the claw can do as well, uh, different grips, views, you know how it would uh, sit in that space as well that that uh, its testing facility. So they gave me a background by another artist uh, named Mache uh, Kusnara, uh, who's also brilliant he did amazing work on the film um so he built this in uh environment so they asked that i you know pop him in there uh 
just so we can see scale of him against uh, like a skull crawler. Cause we didn't know the scale of these things and, and they changed quite a bit. Uh, and then, you know, open the mouth, close the mouth. You know, they want to see all that as well. Uh, here's some like really massive, you know, claw scales and stuff like that. Let's, let's, there's lots like <laughs> that. Look at those things. Look at those things. Those huge, huge grab like boxing things. gloves, big old boxing gloves. So I'll just kind of go through that. Um, and then, then it started becoming like, I knew the ending of the movie and they were like, okay, let's, let's see this final scene. And that's when, um, you know, they wanted to, you know, they had a very specific shot in mind of, of it was going to be Kong. Um, it was going to be Kong, you know, clamping down Mechagodzilla's mouth. And that's what kind of blows him up. So, so we, you know, I played mm -hmm. around with some shots of that, you know, blowing it up. And this is, these are very raw renders as well. So nothing, uh, you know, finally painted, but uh, just, Throwing them options again, you know, maybe this would look cinematic, you know, to see all the parts burst out of them. So uh, ultimately they decided to rip his head off, which was much cool. Uh, more beam options. And then, uh, you know, I, since I had that scene again, I, I snuck in a keyframe uh, just to, uh, you know, get everybody excited. Uh, and this was just one of my favorite things to paint uh, was this keyframe just because it was just a cool moment. And I thought, oh, what if there's helicopters shining lights on them? So just a blast uh and then this this shot was also one of those keyframes i snuck in and uh they ended up they ended up going for it um and then shots of the the inner workings of the structure and all of that goodness and then they they said let's see some final poses of him and that's uh that's where we landed was the they wanted the steel metal look uh and to see that final kind of you know battle cry image that was going to be you know super heroic and uh man i gotta tell you it was it was really cool uh and then you see the final i'm just gonna skip through some stuff here uh That's and awesome um you see the final and you know you're seeing your art in uh you know on on t-shirts and stuff and then you see the final look of it and you're just like i, I can't believe it you know they did it so <clears throat> uh yeah. And then now, and now they have like final toys of it. You know, they have like really high res, insane toys. Um, so like going from, you know, seeing the process, you know, kick into gear all the way to the finished product, man, it's, it's a wild ride. So, That's um, incredible, Jared. Uh, I, I'll throw up, uh, I'll throw up. I just have a, uh, a couple turntables so you can see, um, Oh, nice. So that was a little turntable that I did for them. And uh, that got their that got their attention as well. This was also the render, you know, that I used. This was the pose that I used for that keyframe uh, that they caught their attention. So they got this at the same time that I was, you know, sending them final keyframes as well. So they, they really uh, they really dug it. And, uh, and everything you've been showing us, at least for the for the the two D illustrations, that's all just essentially been uh, ZBrush key shot Photoshop workflow. That's correct. Yeah, that's it's awesome. all it's that's it. Um, just three programs, um, and you know, just burning through them. So and it, you're going to release your Mecha Godzilla brush pack next, right? It's going to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That those all those parts are long gone. That's awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So it, it was just, uh, you know, getting to, to work on one Mecha Godzilla in my lifetime was amazing. And then um, I, I feel like I feel really blessed to work on this one because it was, uh, you know, it's a dream come true. And, uh, you know, you're just you're just going wild. And then, you know, you're not sure, you know, what you do is really going to make it to the end because, you um, you you have no idea because stuff in production changes all the time um and a lot it changed marcel is nodding because it's true it changes constantly so you don't know if what you do is going to make it so the fact that he made it and he made it 
you know, all the way to, to the end, um, that it's such a rare occasion. Uh, it really is rare. So, uh, it was, it was just a blast to work on, man. <laughs> it's just one of the coolest experiences, <laughs> my life, you know? Yeah, I remember, I think I might have even been in class with you at the time, or it might have been right before. I remember you said something effective. Oh, you know, I'm I'm working really hard right now because I just got, you know, offered a project that I feel that I really care a lot about. Yeah. Um, and that was all you said. Yeah. And then, and then I remember when the when you started dropping the images from the movie of what you'd worked on, I'm like, is that yeah. the project you were talking? You're like, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I mean, it, and it was a wild time, too, because my, my kid was born. Uh, wow. While, while Mechagodzilla, while I was working on that. So, like, at one point I had to leave the hospital to go comp some images real quick, you know, to send off to the client. So it, it, it was, you know, it's always going to be burned in my mind, you know, having to run out, you know, my cat, you know, I'm holding my kid and I'm like, Oh, got to run, uh, got to work. But then I, you know, I, I came right, right back and, you know, I was only gone for like a couple hours, but I came back and, you know, held my newborn son. (laughs) <laughs> and uh so they both have the same birthday Mecca yeah absolutely and, yeah. And, 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 you know, i think it was one of these some of these final images that i was doing uh because it was towards the tail end of the project so it was like i had we and then there was kind of also a ticking time bomb on on uh on our side because uh i was like i gotta finish this so i can be with my kid you know my my new kid so mm-hmm. it was it, and that was uh three and a half years ago uh so it took a long time to you know to, to make the movie and then he was actually old enough to play with the toys when it came out that's amazing wow yeah. coolest coolest thing ever man <laughs> um we do have some questions that have come in but i think we're going to save all questions till the yeah. end just for the yeah. sake of time um, if you have questions and i'm not able to answer them hit me up on twitter and i'm happy to answer anything yeah, but um, no, this and how cool. I love seeing the pro- both with, with Matt and yourself. I love seeing the process. That's yeah. what I nerd out on the most because all of these designs that we wind up seeing in these films are the result of a journey. You know, it's yeah. not like you just sat down one day and said, hey, there it is. You know, it was like yeah. everything's linked. An experience. And th- yeah. this was actually the first concept art, uh, uh, fan art that I saw. So I, I remember it. when you posted that. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, because I was like, I got this kid, this one kid, you know, this yeah. is a, this kid's journey into art begins. Now. Dude, seriously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how like, many of us started doing exactly this exactly of something that inspired that, us? And I was like, yeah. Was like, the, when the kids are in, you know, you know, you got something. You got it. You know? Absolutely. And so and cool. Seeing the director was so happy and, uh, you know, memes that came out and all that, <laughs> and all that silliness, you know, the Funkos, you know, that's, that's all that stuff that's just like, it's all secondary to the design process. Uh, but, and, and it's rare when this stuff happens. So when it does, mm-hmm. you gotta, you gotta save up all that, all that stuff, save everything that happens. And savor it, right? Like, yeah, and savor I think it, yeah. I, that's the other thing I really enjoyed. And we, you know, I've talked about this a lot is like sustainability as a person, yeah. as an artist is like, take your wins, like enjoy it, savor it. You they, know, they are few and far between, you know, they take, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it takes time. So when you get a win, you know, celebrate 100%, it. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Jared, thank you so much for sharing all of this. this thank each, you. Thank and you. we, we've got, um, we've got Marcella up next and every, each one of your guys' presentations could like literally be a stream in and of itself, but I love seeing it in context of like a crew, like, like this team of people that all contributed to unique aspects of the movie. Um, okay. Well, Marcella, the, uh, the floor is yours. Nice. So, man, that's, I don't even know where to start. That was amazing, both of Um, (laughs) y'all. I don't know how I can top that. But, um, yeah, let's get into it. I guess what I can do is I'll play the reel, like, all the way through. I'll mute it so it's not loud. Let me turn the music down all the way. And then um, I guess we can just, uh, what I'll do, I'll just walk through it. Because I think I have it lined up in sequences anyway. So let me share my screen. Can you see it? You guys see it? Yeah, we got it. All right, cool. All right, so let's play.
yes. Boom. That is so sick. <laughs> it's just the best, dude. <laughs> it's just oh, so sick. He just bullies Godzilla Bully the entire Godzilla. time. This is insane. Oh, yeah. Uh, my colleague, uh, Josh, just posted in the chat, by the way, guys, uh, the Vimeo link. Um, if you want to be able to go back and and watch this, which I know that I will. This whole sequence of Kong on the uh, on the aircraft carrier was so cool. Yeah, it's insane. How many shots is all this? Like, at least five or six. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is all CG, all of it. Bad boy. Okay, so here we go. From the beginning, we'll get that, that was amazing. I just, I'm sorry, yeah. I have to give a call out really quick. That was awesome. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it was sick. So, fast going. I guess I can scrub through it now. So, this explosion, I just started it out with this one because it was the beginning of the, um, the beginning of the movie where it got to destroy that facility. So this is like the beginning um, explosion of that, where he swats down that. Um, and so looking at this, let's go back for a second. Looking at this sequence, this is the end, ending sequence. So basically we did, there was a bunch of different uh, effects going on throughout this sequence, but a lot of it, as you can see, um, is dust and building destruction. Um, obviously there's being like special things like the beams and the ax and the Godzilla's, uh, uh, his uh, atomic breath and stuff like that. But most of the effects in, in this last sequence is building instruction because they're like wiping out all of Hong Kong. And so what we did was we placed these volumes, I guess I can just walk through it. So this is just bubbles off the hairs of Kong and his body. Um, but yeah, so we place volumes, huge volumes and like with, um, like noise and stuff like that all over them. And we just kind of statically, and then we emit it for one frame, made dust. And then, uh, Godzilla, Mecha and Kong are all emitting from their feet, their bodies, their hands. And I think a part of the ax is emitting as well, as well as, uh, Mecha's tail. So um fast forward to this sequence which is one of my favorite ones right, where yeah. um yeah the skull crawler is escaping um this door gave me so many problems i ended up having to just to make a cube and it made it down because the fluid was going through but all of the steam was there so i did the setup for that and then now this is just more dust basically um throughout the sequence this sequence was fun because it was like my first time like doing like a, a sequence full of explosions. So if you notice, there are all these explosions in the front. So there's like one here, there's one in the back, the, this big one, there's like two or three in the front and there's one behind this building. So I can just rewind it so you can see a little bit better. Ah. And then somebody else blew up those those big containers. I forgot this guy in um, Vancouver. It's more dust. This dust was cool to me, be only because I'm just a bigger Kong fan. And that, I mean, look at that volume. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, we basically used a lot of invection and uh, and collision velocity, to because they wanted when I did this, they wanted it wasn't it didn't look anything like this at the, my first pass, because all of this detail. Um, basically I kind of avoided his body, but then they were like, oh, who cares? So I just put dust and admitted from him, the volumes, like I said before, and now you get this big, 
huge plum. Boom. So Boom. yeah. And this sequence, <laughs> which was the biggest sequence in the movie for us, basically my job, um, first off, was creating these huge uh, like plumes of smoke and fire that were basically everywhere. And just a little backstory on these like fires. These are, it's the same setup that we used in Midway. And since I did all a lot of those uh, fires, large fires in Midway, they were like, Marcella, just go on the Kong and do the same thing. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, sick. <laughs> so these actual, and I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna ask like how many voxels and all that type of shit. All I, can, all I know, I forgot the division size, Obviously, it was be uh, over a year ago, but I do know that each one of these uh, fires themselves were like three terabytes. Wow. Which, you know, they didn't really like, but they, they kept asking for more detail. So, I mean, I gave them more detail. Dude, three terabytes. Like, I mean, because yeah, I mean, I mean, you got to think like, okay, like a scan line. Um, how do I put this? Like, okay, when I first started, I'm gonna let it let it play. I can always remind it. When I first started, basically, my supervisor came over to my desk when I had racked up like 30 terabytes working on on Midway, and I thought I was about to get in trouble. He walked over, shook my hand. Congratulations, you're like on the you're in the top 10. <laughs> So obviously somebody is way like in the hundreds, hundreds. Wow. Of yes. <laughs> yes, dude. So um, I love that. I love, I it. love it. <laughs> yeah. So like in scan line of it's um sometimes when you, especially when you're working on monster stuff, bigger stuff like this, it's go big or go home. So let me rewind a little bit. Um obviously I didn't do that. let me keep playing. We I did some water. This is like I did the water on the back of these boats. Um, you can, you barely can see this one just because of the camera. This one I had started, but I didn't finish. One of the senior guys finished this one, so this is his sim. But it's, it was basically based off what I gave him. But he did a better job at finishing <laughs> than I did. But uh, yeah, this ocean sim that I did. Uh, another guy he came in and put the light underneath because. If you can remember, like Godzilla's about to like blow his breath and like blow up this whole ship. So that's the water. And I think the rest of it's just fire. Yeah. So the fire on the water, my friend Gaston Antos, he did the, the fires on the water, which I think are even cooler than the tall fires that I did because you can't even really see mine because uh, it's backlit. But you can see his stuff is really dope. And more, this is like the big reveal of him towards the end of the battle. I did, I don't know how many versions, I did like 20 different versions of all of these smokes. And that'd be basically, basically A to like M. And I, we kind of placed and put stuff in different places, went through months of, you know, placement basically. Cause once they signed off on the look, it's basically how they want it to be structured throughout the shot. So yeah. That's sick. Where am I? Where am I? So yeah, um, yeah, a lot of work. I mean, that's just a little bit of it. You know, I kind of rushed through it because I didn't want to bore anybody. But um, a lot of smoke, a lot of fire. Godzilla, obviously, with, um, not Godzilla, but Mecha coming in with a just a tidbit on the collision. Um, we had to. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to say remodel, but because he was so heavy and so detailed, and especially when after the modeling team went in and kind of weaponized him um, and added all the stuff coming out of his shoulders, like all of the um, missiles that he shoots at Godzilla and Kong, um, we had to basically, and there was a, I don't know, I, I, but yeah, I believe that they, they gave us a model, but it was still too heavy, so we had to basically uh, go in and like kind of, I think there was a, I don't know, a sim version so we use mm -hmm. that instead of obviously the heavy one. So yeah, yeah, you had but, to make like a collision version of the geo that was low well, enough to. Simulate. Well, no, because uh, modeling did that for us. Modeling had like a lower res version, 
and we the one of the good things about using flow line is as long as your uh, geometry is sealed, you can just throw it right in. It's like an import node, and then you don't have to really do it. Because in Houdini, you have to cast out all these VDBs and do all this stuff. You could just import him into the simulation, and it just works. That's awesome. Like, we didn't have to shrink. Everything is to size also. We didn't shrink anything down. Everything is the way that you made it. Like, <laughs> this little scale that you made it. So, yeah, like, Godzilla, Kong, all of uh, Hong Kong, everything, that the scroll crop. Crawlers, everything wow. is like simmed at that scale. Wow. Yeah. That's Brand awesome. Size. That's why our uh, sizes, our cash sizes were so big. They're huge. And because I like adding detail. <laughs> well, I was thinking about what you said about the detail. Like you're talking about, yeah, the, the smoke plume in the background. Yep. It was, this is how big it was because of all the detail. Mm -hmm. um, this is coming from a total novice standpoint because I, I, I'm not a VFX artist, but as a viewer, it would seem to me that it's it's the finer the detail, the more it sells the scale, right? If it's if it's going to be smoke that's 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 that massive, I feel like if it wasn't so detailed, it just you wouldn't be able to know how big it was. Um, well, I mean, well, I, I added in a lot of like edge detail because I that's mm -hmm. just my thing. Um, but as long as the sh it's really just about the shapes, like as long as the shapes mm -hmm. are accurate. Um, compared to obviously the characters, because I had you had to I had to make them look huge, even yeah. bigger than the actual characters themselves, because it's, it's supposed to be like a long a battle. So these fires are raging. He's blowing yeah. up, tearing up all these boats in the water, or the skull collar came out of the door, so they wanted all this steam to go all into the camera. Um, so yeah, like scale, especially at scan line, scale matters. Like yeah. Well, I, th I think back like to say, you know, even go back five, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the, some of the shots that you might see in movies where you go, that just doesn't feel like it belongs. Oh, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's almost scale. like a mismatch in scale. Yeah. Yeah. It's a scale. Yeah. And you can see it. Like, I don't, well, I can see it when you look at other people's like, I mean, this is not a diss, but you look at other people's stuff and it's like, that doesn't feel right because the scale is off. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, and it, it, like just you know that you're <laughs> making a, a fire that's what three terabytes, um, that totally suspends any disbelief. <laughs> it just puts us in the world. Like we don't have to think about it or process what we're looking at. It's just there. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. I love it. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, one question came in for you, Marcel. About mm -hmm. um, can you give us kind of a list of the the software that you were using um, in your process? At Scaling, mm -hmm. we, we use I use Flowline. Okay. <laughs> oh, Flowline, um, thinking Flowline. particles, obviously, or the it's basically particles that are sourcing all, all those explosions mm -hmm. are sourced by uh, thinking particles. Gotcha. Um, what else? Yeah, I didn't use Houdini until like uh, Suicide Squad. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously at MPC we use Houdini, but at mm -hmm. uh, at Scanline. Up until just recently, a few months ago, they just shifted to like all, all Houdini, not all, but a lot more Houdini uh, pipeline. Mm -hmm. But when I was there for almost two years, it was Flowline for the most mm -hmm. part. Flowline, Thinking Particles, and then they have a lot of like proprietary stuff as well. Okay. Yeah. And then um, let's see, another question was, uh, someone's just curious, how did you check um, edits? as you worked on the creation of the plumes? I think the question might be coming from a standpoint of like with how massive just one plume was in terms of what you were working with. Um, how did you guys, I, I don't know, maybe they're talking about the editing process of like when somebody would say, we need to, we need to change this aspect or that aspect. Oh, um, well, like I said before, like a lot of the lead work I had already done on Midway. So I basically right. grabbed that yeah. setup and cause they needed, they needed, I mean, I don't know how many of those flyers. I, I created a bunch of them, a whole library of them, really. So I already knew what to pick and pull from. It just, oh, it, okay. after that, it was about placing it and make sure it looks right. And yeah. Then, obviously, you get more notes because it's a different film. So mm -hmm. they want a different look. So I had to make it look kind of more adventurous because, like, Midway was so real. You know, mm -hmm. like, Godzilla, I wanted, to, I wanted it to feel like a monster, like a real, like 
the monster really came through here. Like, you know, absolutely something that you really would never grasp mentally, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's That's, yeah, I definitely like. more fantastical quality about it. Um, which I got to give a call out to Midway as well. Like I, I, I made a beeline for that movie mainly because I'm a huge fan of World War II aviation, but mm, yeah. just the scale of the the sequences, you know, yeah. when the when the battles are fully ra fully raging, um, it's like it, yeah, it's like being there. It's amazing. Um, let's see. Um, we had, I know we also had, and you guys can feel if, as we're as we're in the uh, the the final. Uh, final moments of our stream here, you guys can feel free to type a few more questions into the chat for any one of the artists. Um, but uh, let's see here. So uh, <laughs> there was a question that came in, uh, let's see, for, it looks like for, uh, for Matt and Jared, how did you both take legendary creatures and apply a little of yourselves into them? Is there anything of yourself secretly placed into the character? So any, uh, I don't know, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I, my, my brain's just going on like what those I, things I, I get be, what but... I'm saying. Like there, yeah. there's something that happens when you're designing, you put yourself Absolutely. into your character. Yeah, every work of art uh, is a self-portrait. Some, some artists, yeah. uh, uh, I, I can actually see their faces in their work, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because it's something unconscious when you're looking at yourself in the mirror. That's really what you have to look at. So you can't help but kind of put yourself in there. So mm -hmm. I I try not to uh, put myself in in stuff, but it always you know I'm sure it sneaks in. But so like, there's in no, there was no like, like little plate that had Jared was here like scribbled. No, into it. I try not to I try not to do that. <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, you know, there's a little bit of me in every of them. You know? I I definitely can say that <laughs> in some of the keyframes. Yeah, and, and some of it's because I know you, but yeah. like looking at some of the poses of Mecha Godzilla and those keyframes, I could be like, I could totally see Jared making this and like, like physically like acting getting, it out yeah, while getting, you're making getting it. Getting yeah. physical and like going absolutely, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I already I knew the job. Like, when we when we got that like the the character in, I was like, I already know who made that. Just by looking, <laughs> just by looking at him, and like you could the, see. I was like, oh, <laughs> "Absolutely, <laughs> thanks a lot." That's a that's a really uh, interesting point, Marcella. Did was there much like while you guys were? Because I know that concept is so early in the process, mm -hmm. but did you guys get to see each other's work at certain points that you were connected to the project? Like you, you saw Jared's work uh, come through Marcella. Yeah. I mean, the concept, no, concept I, guys I are usually kind of way way in the front of the runway, and the they're just cloistered. working on their thing. Yeah, yeah, like you we, know, far we, off. Get, we get assets like way, like maybe I don't what a year after you guys are done with them or something like that. Yeah. Like we're always like at the end, and so mm -hmm. so when we got, like I said, when we got the um, Mecha Godzilla into our inventory, and like I said, I was still working in the middle of Midway while that was happening. So it was like months before I even started that had just came in, but I'm pretty sure that he was done with that months ago, even before it got to us. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. just to, just to circle, circle back on that. I think that, I think that we were working at, on a Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla versus Kong and the job had left. And then months later we hung out and you had just like started working on that. I yeah. think is the case. Or something that there, because there is, there's like, there's a staggering of these people. These want, they want these designs and they go through all of these different uh, stages to really find like the environment and the uh, aesthetic that they want. And so, yes, like Jared and I didn't even know that we had worked on the project together until so like months and months. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if not like, like, uh, if not okay. like two years later. <laughs> you know, no, Matt, I think you would. Matt, you had mentioned that you were you were in you took classes from Jared while you were at Noman. So you and Jared were at, the, at Noman at the same time since that Jared was teaching. You were at Noman. Marcella, was there overlap for you as well with Matt when, and Jared when you were at I Noman? Mean, I would I would always see. I mean, uh, Matt was like what a couple classes above me. Yeah, I think um, you were. Not, yeah, I think it was just right ahead of you. Yeah, I, I'm not yeah. sure though. Yeah, and then I would always like sneak into Jared's class and use the computers, but 
I never took any of that. Like, can I use this computer? I feel, like, it. I feel it, bro. I feel it. <laughs> while, while class is in session, you're like sneaking in, like, I need yeah, this workstation. Always. Yeah, gotcha. Um, but like, it's, I, it's got to be really, really cool for you guys to have this prior relationship through Nomen and then to all three of you be be winding up on a project like this in your own right and then to be like talking about it now. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's awesome. Crazy. It's awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. the coolest. Cuz yeah. you know that that's that's the thing we we say there at Nomen a lot is that you're you're building your network right now when mm -hmm. you're when you're there together cuz the people that are sitting next to you are going to go on to great jobs and they're going to remember you. They're going to recommend you uh, and, and so on. So your whole, your whole network is happening right now and uh, you're building your reputation right now. And uh, you know, so many years later, we all were all like, you worked on that. So did I, I didn't know me neither. You're yeah. like, you have no idea, <laughs> so cool. but you're, you're all there together. Cause we're all, you know, uh, all the best people come from Nomen, and that's a fact. Facts. A yeah, fact. I mean, you, it, one way of like you, we we all say like you got to be a nice person, be nice all the yeah. time because you never know. Like we're all you just see it as like you're always being job interviewed. Every oh, human yeah. act, hum, every human interaction is a potential, you know, job interview in that sense, for sure. Absolutely, it's a uh, it's entirely important to be able to work with and be friendly, man because uh you can have the best you've ever seen in your life right in front of your face and if you can't stand them you will hire some dude that literally has 20 percent of his talent at the exactly. same age man yeah like no joke because you want your team to be cohesive mm -hmm. it's all just networking you never want to burn bridges you never you never want to have any of that any of that vile stuff man like you gotta be good because you're mm -hmm. about to be in it you know like you got to be creative with each other. It's such a demanding, such yeah, a demanding. Thing. You're, you're, you're all exhausted, exhausted together. together. You're creatively yeah. exhausted with everyone. Yes. You know? Yeah. You, you see each other at, at your best, and you see each other at your worst yeah. in terms yeah. of energy yeah. output. Absolutely. Um, Marcel, there's a question came in for you, and and I can definitely echo this question. I was thinking the same thing when you brought it up, but viewers want to know how did you store and process three terabytes of files? Like, what's the process? You're making art with these gargantuan file sizes. How does that mm -hmm. even work? Well, uh, shout out to their pipeline. That's how it works. Like, okay, <laughs> the scanline has an amazing. I don't, like I I I thought about it every day. Like, how are we processing all this data? Like, mm. well, we do a lot of cleanup along the show, so it's not like we just we have old stuff just laying around. Mm -hmm. At the end, we we have what we need. Um, so, but still, um, yeah, the, the the farm, the whole pipeline is built around effects, lighting, and comp. So when you put those three first, like you're gonna have an amazing pipeline. It's just because it's catered to do crazy things. So, yeah, like I, it's it's not me. Like it's the yeah. Part. yeah, yeah. I, just, I just took advantage of what was there. Yeah, like, you got to have that team. Yeah. When I when I visited ILM in San Francisco, they they take you under, uh, you know, in the basement, and you can see the just the rows of servers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, yeah, when when a project kicks up, you can feel the heat. Wow. Uh, can, you know, and and all of that is cooled and and uh, yeah. you know, just the highest technology stuff. I mean, it has it it has its own power supply. So if the city of San Francisco shut off. ILM can keep running. So they, I mean, <laughs> I can imagine what Scanline's got, but wow. uh, yeah, I mean, so they'd say like, yeah, you, you can, you know, we, we put our hand to it and be like, oh, there's monster trucks or, you know, here comes, <laughs> here comes this show. This is totally. Jurassic Park happening. That's amazing. Yeah. It's the coolest. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> I love it. He's good under the basement. Oh yeah. They're busy. Yeah. They can <laughs> feel definitely it. busy. Feel it. Yo, that sounds awesome. What else they show you down there in the basement? There, Gary. Right. Oh, yeah, there's like oh, you got like man. Darth Vader's bones down there. Like what? Yep. What's going on? They have the uh, Jar Jar Binks and and uh, Carbonite. Ah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, we gotta thaw them out when they're ready for his next yeah. uh, his next his spinoff series on Disney Plus. 
<laughs> it's him and Emperor Palpatine together. Oh, oh my! Well, okay. The, at, at least as the urban legend goes, I heard that Ian McKeg started that started that mythology. Did he start? That? Yeah, it was. Uh, there's a whole story, but you can go back and watch the Ian McKeg stream oh. that I did on May the fourth, 2020. Um, some really cool stories in there. You gotta check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, I I want to be respectful of you guys' time. Um, but this has been an incredible evening. Like I I love streams like this. Um, it's just, I feel like all I got to do is just nerd out on what you guys make the whole time. Um, and, and I know that our, our viewers are super appreciative as well. Um, I've, I always like to ask our guests as we're wrapping, um, you know, I'm and not asking for like, a, like a book or anything like that. Just, just a comment or a thought. Um, what would you say to anybody watching, uh, whether they're young or old or wherever they're at in their life experience, who would aspire to do the kind of stuff that you're doing? Um, because I think there's so much limiting, self-limiting that goes on for creatives. So what would you have to say to someone that's watching this going, man, if I could do that for a job, you know, what advice would you have? Anyone? Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Uh, find something you love, but no matter what other people say, if they cut you down, whatever, fuck that shit. I grew up. I grew up like drawing these crazy things mm -hmm. at school, and all of my teachers were like, "You can't use your God-given talent making crazy images like that." <laughs> well, <laughs> guess <laughs> what? <laughs> Here we are, boys and girls. Right. Find the thing you like, man. Fuck it. Yeah. Do it. Hey, man. I I remember a, a popular phrase in the in the early '90s was, you know, you you can't sit around playing video games all day because nobody will ever pay you to do that, um, you know. But <laughs> look at us now. Um, any any other thoughts from uh, from uh, from Jared or or from you, from you, Marcella, about just about uh, how to get started? Or about what? Yeah, or you know, say say there's someone out there. Uh, I, and one of you guys can take like uh, for our Nomen, our Nomen students that might be watching. Anything you want to say to someone who's utilizing Nomen right now? Are they are they back on campus yet? Uh, we will be starting in the fall term. We're oh. we're spooling up for that right now. The servers in our basement are getting very hot because um, <laughs> <laughs> they're about to open up the doors. Well, I mean, I I would say, I mean, just I mean, echoing off of what Matt said, yeah, just go for what you want to do. Obviously, um, research and you know do your di due diligence and get g better as you go. Um, but yeah, like keep going and um, don't. Yeah, I don't know. He he said it perfectly. Like don't let nobody stop you. Study all the time. I still study. I still take classes. Like you know, mm -hmm. um, always sure. keep learning. And yeah. Take showers because I don't want to sit next to no stinky people that get some money. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. Okay, I, hey, yeah, I believe you. Your body. Move I believe because because when the servers get hot, you sweat, right? <laughs> so you gotta. But you don't sweat on the floor. That's that's like why? What happened? Anyway. <laughs> I might, you know, just, whatever. Anyways, just <laughs> be cool. It's just yeah, reputation does matter. Absolutely. Um, passion and love for what you do also matters. Like I'm very, I don't know if anybody knows this, but I'm very passionate about effects. I'll, like I said before, I don't, I mean, I don't know in the beginning I said that I didn't take my classes seriously. I did, but I knew what I was there for. Mm -hmm. So that was always in my back pocket. Like, okay, we're in oh, modeling yeah. class right now. Pay attention to Max, but uh, Houdini, there's a lab open next and just go play with Houdini. Like always like keep like an open mind and just keep going. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. And there's so many different things for people to be passionate about, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, so. I'm not Brazilian. Who said that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, in the chat. I'm totally black. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, wait, 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 wait. There are black. There are black Brazilians, but I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, like, sorry, Jared, it's down to you. Jerry, you got to close us out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, what I what I would say uh, to anybody, any other artists out there, is cultivate a if they can do it, I can do it attitude. Um, because uh, you can do it. Uh, you can learn anything you want to. You can change your mind. You know, you can grow. Um, 
all it takes uh, there there are no limits there's there's just incremental improvement every day pick that thing that you love and, and go for it and just do it every day and get good at it yep. uh you know and then take your profession seriously as well like you know uh if that requires constant learning constant study uh and and then also learning the head game as well like getting inside of your head learn how to talk to yourself in a productive not uh in a constructive not destructive way so artists were in our head and um all day all day every day we're in our head so you will you'll do this to yourself will you talk down to yourself or you'll uh you'll negate yourself prune negative thoughts right away so if they come at you and they're like if your if your thoughts come at you and they say like oh i can't do that shut it down and say like shut up mm -hmm. brain shut up no i'll do whatever the hell i want to because your your biggest enemy is yourself and it, it's your mind so uh learn how to talk to yourself learn how to prune negative thoughts and and uh never be destructive with yourself always be constructive be like okay well i didn't do this thing the way i wanted to this time the next time is going to be better and the next time is going to be better and, and that's what happens you get incrementally better and just remember like somebody else started from scratch too yeah. down the line and they got good so if, if they can do it so so can i awesome great words to end on guys so thank you so much uh to the three of you for your time this evening uh matt Jared, Marcella, you guys are rad. It's been super fun with you. So awesome. um, and everybody else um, on the stream, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, definitely uh, tune back in for our next stream should be our art jam on uh, Wednesday uh, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, currently those are being hosted by Noman's founder, Alex Alvarez. Um, and uh, he has just finished a... Um, a, a sorry, a, a study, like a cohort in uh, Unreal Engine. And uh, he's shown us the cinematic he's been working on in Unreal and talking to us about oh, the nice. process. And uh, we've been looking at some cool stuff. So come back to the stream on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And in the meantime, everybody stay safe, stay creative, and we'll see you here again soon. Good night. Love you. Bye. <laughs>